shoe of Monero, and today, uh, yeah, today we uh, we heard him speak about RandomX, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited to, to see this development in, in Monero, and um, if you could please explain to us what RandomX is, uh, and just a quick synopsis of what it is it's going to do for Monero and how it will affect uh, the miners within Monero and maybe even end users. Okay, so first hello and thank you for having me here. Um, so RandomX is a proposal for a new mining algorithm for the Monero network. <laughs> and uh, the goal for RandomX is to be more ASIC resistant than the previous algorithm. So right now, you know, mining ASICs dominate completely in the Bitcoin network and they've, uh, they've taken two or three stabs at dominating the Monero network over the past year, year and a half. Uh, and the, the reason that we are trying to you know, fight to keep them away is because they're a very strong centralizing force. And you know, in a cryptocurrency, the, the goal is to stay decentralized. Right. So you know, when you have ASICs mining on your network, you have a very strong centralizing force that's taking over, and that's something we want to avoid. Okay, so there has been a lot of talk within the space where there's a, a challenge to that ethos of decentralization being the end, and there's a new mindset coming in, which is more of like competition and a meritocracy of miners that uh, that people are championing that perspective more. You're starting to see it more and more. You start seeing it with offensive mining, such as uh, Shark Pool, um, where competition is held at higher esteem over decentralization. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's a really distorted way for them to interpret things. You know, the, the reason that we want decentralization is decentralization of power and control. You know, we do not want a single entity to be able to monopolize the network. And when you talk about competition, uh, there are winners and losers, and the winners become a monopolistic centralizing force. And so that's not the perspective that we want to take. Okay, and um, these uh, now we're talking about offensive mining and a possible future. Um, where before this interview, you yourself mentioned that miners are indeed profit seekers, but when they turn into uh, a roaming gang of hooligans destroying all coins and you know going after uh, you know orphaning uh, valid blocks and what do you do then like uh, I mean you're, you're moving into random X but these guys are have, have an approach of using uh, of, have, of, of having an arsenal of various different types of mining equipment ready to go so uh, what would be the game plan there to protect the Monero network you know it's um, that's a good question the but because RandomX allows anything to mine it, pretty much, you know, any PC or smartphone or something, I think we're going to have a large enough set of resources available that we can probably fend off a lot of attacks. And uh, if there are these companies like NiceHash where you, you can rent hash rate on demand, right? Uh, you know, if we see that attacks are happening, it, we can probably rent or spin up additional hash rate to fend them off. Okay. Yeah, um, so there, before RandomX uh, became like the predominant choice within the Monero community, there were other proposals. If you could please go o over those proposals and, and what, you know, and maybe if, do you see foresee a future where those proposals might be taken more serious? Uh, as, okay, there's, there were a couple of other ASIC resistance proposals, such as ProgPal, uh, and then there's also the proposal that we abandon ASIC resistance and just go for a very simple algorithm that's easily ASIC uh, compatible, um, like SHA-3. And I think SHA-3 is still on the table as a future alternative if RandomX doesn't live up to its promises. Right? Uh, these other algorithms probably are not in the running right now. Okay. But what would you say is the most, um, the biggest challenge for Monero right now? In terms of... In general. If you were to choose one aspect of Monero that has the most challenge right now, what would it be? Uh, 
I think right now that the biggest challenge is public awareness and education. You know, uh, if you talk to people, first of all, if you talk to people and um, and they're aware of cryptocurrencies, a lot of them are not aware of the privacy risks that all the other uh, transparent coins bring with them. Right? So first of all, there's there's a lack of awareness about the need for privacy and the fact that it's missing in most of the ecosystem. And then uh, the next part about it is you know educating them about the reasons why actually everybody deserves privacy. You know, and it's not just something. It's not just an evil tool that uh, you know criminals and um, terrorists use. Right? It, it is something that everybody needs in their daily life. Correct. It's it's, it, it's it, the transparency should be optional, exactly. and people should be educated on on that. The the transparency is something that it, um, that steps into their personal yeah. unwarranted right yeah. so uh, right now um, Bitcoin is is still market leader do you see your personal opinion do you see Monero um, moving up in the ranks within its market cap uh, probably slowly you know I mean we have seen in the past that you know I mean two years ago it was the number three coin right? and so it's it's always possible again. Yeah. Uh, I think if you look at a lot of the projects that are in the top ten right now, they don't actually have valid use cases. You know, they, they don't actually have a reason for occupying those spots, aside from the fact that speculators have dumped a lot of money in them. You know, they don't actually have a use case, right? whereas Monero actually has a real use case. So would you say that it's that there's market ignorance regarding Monero, or that people just don't care about privacy? It could be both of those, you know. Uh, I mean, Monero is relatively obscure. I mean, if you talk to a random person on the street, most of them, most of them aren't very aware of cryptocurrencies. They might have heard of Bitcoin. They certainly haven't heard of Monero. So yeah, there there is a certain level of ignorance, and then the, there's also, you know, um, in the community that is aware of cryptocurrencies, there is a large proportion that don't think of privacy as their top priority. That's right on. True. So like what um, Monero stands as being the champion of the individual, the champion of privacy, right now, and and do you for do you see any actual competitors in that realm? Not at this time, because there are other coins that claim to be privacy oriented, but they are not private by default. And so uh, they only have opt in privacy. And you know, we've seen time after time that opt in privacy doesn't work. You know, it doesn't get used. When it gets used, uh, it makes your transaction stand out. So instead of hiding you, it makes you more obvious. So yeah, it's, it's counterproductive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now there is a there has started there started to be a a lot of fear mongering against privacy recently, um, especially coming from the Bitcoin SV community. That is actually affecting, in my opinion, uh, the space psychologically in a very subtle way, right? Um, and it's it's the argument is is that privacy brings out the worst in people. Right, it's that assumption that human beings are inherently not good, right? Which is not a classical liberal assumption that I don't, I would hold as as a, as a libertarian, right? I don't hold that at all. I think human beings are great, you know, and right. So, um, and we shouldn't assume or judge people beforehand, right? Um, what would you say to someone that 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 would make that argument that um, the that privacy by default um, brings out the worst in government and in the everyday interaction. You, you probably could make a case that it brings out the worst in government. I mean, there's obviously a lot of dark money being spent in government today you know, that isn't being accounted for. Uh, but on a personal level, I, I don't think the same applies. Um, you know, it's like the, the whole uh, example of um, you know, why do bathrooms have lockable doors? You know, I mean, there's a lot of processes that are just a part of life, and we take privacy for granted with those things. That's just the way they're done. You, know, you don't keep your, your bathroom door open when you go in there and do your business. You know, there's a lot of things that are just by their nature 
we keep them private, and there's nothing evil about keeping them private. Right on. Um, any um, parting words of advice for any entrepreneurs coming into Monero? A lot of our audience are people that are eager to participate, not just be uh, passive investors. Uh, we have a lot of uh, we amongst the libertarian community is a very very much there's very much a zeal for entrepreneurship, and Monero seems to be like the favorite coin. What would you say to that entrepreneur that's listening to this right now that wants to jump in? Where do they start? Where do they go? You know, there's there's a lot of good material now um, that the Monero Outreach Group is putting together, and there are um, you know vendor support packages. For example, if you want to start an online web business, you know, a lot of people have put together um, payment processing systems for accepting Monero. Right, so you don't have to start from scratch for those things. Um, so if you want to get into a business and accept Monero as part of your business, there are people who can help you with that. Right? So Monero has a zeal as, as a community it will be protected like this is uh, people are passionate they're mission oriented they are going to protect the chain yeah. that's without a doubt people even are mining at a loss and they don't care they're just doing it right. um, there's a technical uh, barrier that will protect the chain as well from that makes it ASIC resistant right so you have the uh, the, the, the passionate uh, motivated activist uh, support you have the technical support and my question is uh, regards the economic incentive to protect the network is it enough you know that's kind of an open question we'll see as we'll see as time unfolds right but uh, you know right now if you look at I mean the, the price of Monero is rising so the incentive to mine is rising and I would say that's probably going to continue for a while um, the the incentive to mine with you know, a particular technology, GPUs or ASICs or CPUs, you know, we obviously are tilting that strongly towards CPUs. Um, but if we weren't doing that, you know, what would happen to the network? You know, the the GPU miners who are on the network would be getting kicked if we did, if we took no action. You know, the ASICs would come in and they'd kick all the GPU guys. The, the the question that comes forth from this comes forth from um, the whole notion of competition over decentralization, right? Where you would have a complete market determining, uh, calibrating what is profitable to mine and what not to mine, what equipment to mine and not to mine, right? So it would be like a, a, it would be it would be akin to the car industry having not a lot of. So uh, companies, like thousands of companies, but around 10 throughout the world, or 20 max, that are producing a good product, a competitive product that is cost efficient for the company and it's good for the public, right? That would be the counter argument to that, right? Um, so, what would be. Why not just let the market have it? I mean, I understand this, the, the fear of mining decentralization, but a lot of libertarians would. Would would make the argument that the best thing to do in the market is not to interfere with it. Um, you know, the, I I would say there there are strong arguments for when that's a valid position, but um, in a situation where it becomes so easy for uh, for it to uh, degenerate into a monopoly, right? A, a monopoly is not a healthy situation for a network like this. Um, and you can see, you know, we, we have the case study of what's happened on the Bitcoin network. We know how it will unfold. You know, we've seen these these companies uh, take over, and, and so you know, it's fairly clear that's something we need to avoid. Yeah, right on, and, and that's what makes Monero special. Right, it protects the individual first and foremost, and it has and it just has a clear mission. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that was the end of that question. Thank you so much for your time again. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. His armpits dripped like a wet sponge. Heart racing, hard to breathe. Every second, watching the price of Bitcoin plummet made his jaw clench tighter. Should he hodl, sell, double down and buy more? And then when Bitcoin shot up, his uncertainty caused him to hesitate again, costing him thousands in lost profits. In fact, whether cryptocurrencies were rising or falling, he didn't know which way to play. But you don't have to lose like that guy, wishing he could trade like a whale, but knowing he'll always be a sardine, unless he gets schooled on how to trade crypto like a pro. 
Jeff Berwick was the first financial analyst to recommend Bitcoin at $3 in 2011. If you had bought $1,000 worth, you would have made almost $6.6 .6 million by 2017, enough money to set you up for life. Then he recommended Ethereum at $2 in 2016. If you listened, $1,000 would have turned into a cool $1,116,895. That's enough for a second home, a trip around the world, and a brand new car, with a few hundred thousand left over for whatever you want. But that's not all. Jeff also nailed the timing on Dash and called EOS an early winner at only 50 cents, making his subscribers a fortune. But Jeff will be the first to tell you, the winning picks didn't all come from him. They were precise targets from his top secret group of advisors, a group he's held a vice-like grip on. But for the first time, he's sharing his advisors with a small group of smart investors. Together, these cryptocurrency geniuses have created wins of 4,224%, 124,900%, even 317,900%.